Yes, I'm recording. So, 3.3, .3, unit circles, circular functions. So this trigonometry, we're gonna go through and actually answer all these things. Now, I handed out unit circles already once. I got these two right here that are gonna need some unit circles. I'll get those for you momentarily when I actually get to that part. All right, so every time I'm looking at a unit circle, now, while I'm talking about this, Everyone, please take out the unit circle, the green paper. Unit circle out. Take these to the backyard. Put them in the sunset. Look at them. Unit circle out. I ask you to take out the unit circle. Please do that. Yes, sir. I'm going to take these to the backyard and I'm going to. Okay. Hey, anyone else that needs another one? Huh? Do I have change? Okay. Anyone else still can't find theirs? Okay. All right, we're good now, right? See? That means yes. Good job. All right, so now, when we're talking about this X represented by the cosine, okay? So I'm always going to be talking about coordinates. X comma Y. If I say cosine of X, that represents the X value. If I say sine, it's going to be my Y value. Cosine is the X, sine is the Y. Cosine is x, sine is y. Now, everyone, look at that green paper and look at the upper right-hand corner of your green paper. Everyone, upper right-hand corner of that green paper. So it's cosine, comma, sine, right? It's always cosine, comma, sine. In the x and the y, the x is my cosine, the sine is my y. That's what it represents all the time. Okay, all the time. What is the radius always going to be on this unit circle? Say it. One. Thank you. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay, here we go. This is the same stuff that's on the upper right-hand corner of your unit circle. The sine is the y, the cosine is the x, the tangent is y over x, cosine, uh, or I'm sorry, cosecant is 1 over y, secant is 1 over x, cotangent is x over y. It's the same thing that's on the paper. You could use this paper on your test. Oh, God. Oh, really? Now, this is 3.3, .3, so that means you have this one and the next section. So it means that you should be testing by Friday of next week. No, no, no. You, you guys should be saying yes because if you get an A, woo! if you get an A, you're exempt from that homework too, right? Wait, so was I exempt from the homework when I got No, you didn't get an A. On both, yeah. On both, both parts together. If you already turned it in, that's the reason why you got the A because you did the work. Okay, here's the same thing that you have. The unit circle. Unit circle is symmetric with respect to the x and the y axis and the origin. Okay, the coordinates. Remember that in my coordinate circle, quadrant one, quadrant one, both values are Samaj, please. Knock your crap off and pay attention. X and y, positive, positive. In quadrant two, negative and a positive. Very good. Quadrant three, okay. Quadrant four, positive negative is positive and negative. 
It's always going to be like that. So the sooner you guys know and remember and love that pattern, the sooner you are getting an A in this. You need that? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. okay. Keep going. All right. For a point on the unit circle, it's arc. Reference arc is the shortest arc from the point itself to the nearest point on the x-axis. So I'll re reference this here. I'll show you guys how. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, we actually used this identity already once. It's my Pythagorean identity. My x squared plus y squared equals 1. So from my unit circle, it's going to look something like this. 1 is the radius. 1 is the radius. Right? Yeah. What is 1 squared? Two, uh, one. It's just 1. You need to do this before class. No. Leave it alone and walk away. One is the radius. My x goes in this direction. The y goes in this direction. So I get x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, but 1 squared is just 1, right? So my radius is going to be 1 here. This is where my Pythagorean identity comes from. And because of that, we know x is represented by cosine, right? There's my cosine squared. Sine is represented by my y. There I get my sine squared. And that's why it's equal to 1. This is an identity that you're going to be using a lot. Okay, All my identities are made from this one. All right, cosine function, circular, there. Okay, so find exact values, sine 3 pi over 2. Okay, is 3 pi over 2 on the unit circle? Yes. Find it. Look at it. Put your finger on it right now. There's more here if you lost it. Oh, oh Monday. Put your finger on it. It's right there, the green. Put your finger on it right now. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. No, wrong. 3 pi over 2. Put that away. No, stop. 3 pi over 2. Find it. 270. Yes, yes. No, that's wrong. That's not 3 pi over 2. That is 3 pi over 2. Yes. Where's 3 pi over 2? Uh, there, yes, there, yes, there, yes. Where's that? Right here. Did you see there? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we got it now? Okay. okay. Now, listen. 3 pi over 2 is right here on the unit circle. And what did I say that the sign represented? Which value? Y value. So what is the y value at 3 pi over 2? Very good. So it's going to be sine 3 pi over 2 equals negative 1. Now, cosine. You guys need to stop, please. Please, just. Cosine is which value? X value. Cosine is the x value. So the x value, find 3 pi over 2, you guys already have that. What is the x value there? Zero. Zero. So cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0. Next one, tangent. Tangent is sine, which is the y value, over cosine, right? Yes. So tangent of 3 pi over 2 is y over x. That's what you have on your unit circle, right? Yeah. It says y over x. What is the y value? What is, a, what is it? Negative 1. Negative Negative one. one over. What is my x value? Zero. Negative 1 over 0 gives you what? Undefined. undefined. You cannot divide by 0, so this is going to be undefined. 
Are we okay? Yes. Yeah. Not bad, right? Yeah. Right. Let's keep going. Next one. Use the figure to find the exact value of cosine 7 pi over 4. And sine 7 pi over 4. Now, everyone, with the magic finger, put your finger on 7 pi over 4. <coughs> put your finger on 7 pi over 4. Good. 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 Good, 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 yes, okay. So now, the unit circle is your friend. It's going to give you all your answers. The cosine, let's take a look. Cosine is which value? It's the x. Come on, class. Cosine is the? X. Cosine, 7 pi over 4. So what is the x value there? Yes? Yeah. All right, thing one and thing two. Are you guys okay on that? <laughs> yes? Okay, you guys are quiet, so I just got to check with you. Yeah? Okay. So, sine 7 pi over 4. Sine is which value, class? Y. What is the y value at 7 pi over 4? There we go. There we go. Is that easy now? Yeah, pretty easy. And here's the last one right here. So now we're going to find, use the figure and the definition of the tangent to find the exact value of tan, 5 pi over 3. Now, negative. it's going to be negative. So now, remember the other day when I teach you guys to count backwards? See? So. How many thirds am I going to go? One. Five of them, right? Yeah. Okay, let's look. Let's look at them. So where's my, so like I'm going backwards because that's what that negative says. So backwards, pi over three. Okay, here's one pi over three, right? Okay, keep going over here. I got another one here, right? Yeah. So that's going to be, uh, let me see, that's two pi over three, right? Over here, this is 3 pi over 3, right? 3 over 3 gives me 1. This one right here is going to be 4 pi over 3. And we're counting all the way over to here, which is this. So these are my negatives counting backwards. So there is a negative 5 pi over 3. So that is going to be the same thing. Okay, there's also another way of doing this if you don't like counting backwards. Now, the thing is called coterminal. Do you remember what coterminal means? No? Okay, what does terminal mean? We had this, this is chapter one. I know, right? That was like two months ago. Okay, coterminal means same end. Same end. So if I was working in degrees, I would add 360 or subtract 360, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, since we are not working in degrees, I'm working with radians. What is a whole circle in radians? 360. 2 pi. 2 pi, very good. If you look right here, it's on my unit circle here, right? 360 is the same as saying 2 pi, right? Oh. Now, we could do this as coterminal. Since 5 pi or negative 5 That's not in between, right? It'd be between 0 and 360, right? It's supposed to be 0 in radians, so this is degree and radians would be 0 to 2 pi. It, same thing, it's just a different way of measuring it. So this is the different way of doing this. So you don't have to work with the negative. You don't have to count backwards. You can find a coterminal. 
So I would do instead of this. So this is a negative. So it's not so it's not enough, right? So if it's not enough, excuse me, pay attention up here. If it's not enough, what do I have to do? I have to add. I have to add, but in this case, I'm adding how much? 2 pi. 2 pi. So I'm adding 2 pi. Right? I'm adding 2 pi. So it should be a negative 5 pi over 3 plus. Now, I like having my fractions already have the common denominator. What would the common denominator here be? Three. three. So I'm going to rewrite this with the common denominator. Six pi over three. Is that still two pi? Where would you get that six? Is that still two pi? Divide that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still two pi, isn't it? Yeah. If I go six divided by three, that's still two pi. So it's the same value, but now it has a common denominator. Right? Yeah. Now can I add these together? Yes. Yeah. It's going to give me just a positive pi over three. So that gets me the exact same spot here. It gets me the exact same spot. So let's take a look. Tangent at negative five pi over three is tangent is the y over x. And what was the y value at that? One. What is the y value there? Rad Negative 3 over 2. Rad 3 over 2. All over. You're on the unit circle, so please pay attention. I am paying attention. We are right here. That's the reason why I was coloring it in when you were looking at him. So this here is the spot we're looking at. The y value right here is the one I'm looking at. This right here. That right there. The y value. Okay. It's the one that comes okay. after the x value. Yeah, that's the y value. Very good. Y value is right 3 over 2. Yeah. What is the x value? 1 half. Wait, what are you doing? Right? Yeah, 1 half. No, we're just plugging in the numbers. The negative is the angle. That's where I went to go find that. Is it this no, oh, it's not going to yeah. be negative because I went negative. Yes, please. Remember how I counted backwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. I counted backwards to get to here. So the negative just told me where I'm going to find the spot on my unit circle. The negative says I'm going backwards here, this mount. But then I showed you another way to find it using the coterminal. Yeah. This is the coterminal method. Oh, so we could just do that. You could do this instead of counting backwards. That's what I was saying. So we, both ways gets me that same dot right there. Okay? So that's why. So the negative just says me a direction. It doesn't have any to do with my fraction. I'm just looking for the y and the x value from right there, okay? So let's go back to this. So I gotta do the math. So I have a fraction over a fraction. Yes? I do not like fraction over fraction. So we cannot divide fractions. You have to multiply by the, say it loud and clear, reciprocal. That earns a candy right there. So you multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be red 3 over 2 times the reciprocal, which would be? One half. Oh, 2 over red. Oh, 2. Two over 1, right? It's the reciprocal of the bottom. Okay. Wait, so why is it so complex for one question? Because it's tangent, and you guys had trouble with finding it because it was negative, and I wanted to make sure I fully explained how to find it in more than one way. I could have been done, like, a while ago. But I'm trying to make sure everyone understands the difference between a negative angle and a positive angle. So positive angle goes counterclockwise. Negative angles go clockwise. That's what that means. All right, so what's going to happen to my twos right here? And so I'm left with? Rad 3 over 1. Rad 3 over 1. So my tangent at negative 5 pi over 3 is just rad 3. Yes, no? Yeah. Not bad, right? 
I don't think there's a part C. Oh, there is. Yeah, there is. Okay, use reference angle and radian to degree conversion. Find the exact value of that. Now, we don't have to do all that. Magic finger. Magic finger. Put the magic finger directly on 2 pi over 3. Find it. Magic finger. Let me see it. There we go. Good. 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 That guy. Let me see it. There it is. Yes. There. You guys there? Good. Did you find it? Okay. Good. All right. So, cosine. Cosine is asking for which value? Negative x. X. Cosine is asking for the x value, right? So class, cosine is asking for the? S. Class, cosine is asking for the? S. There we go. So if it's asking for the x value, I know that it's going to be cosine at 2 pi over 3 would be a negative, negative 1 over 2. There we go. That's it. Oh, okay. We're not doing it the same method that the notes. We rarely do the same method as the notes. That's it. We have a reference sheet that helps us with this. Yes, that's it. And we're not doing that part there. We're stopping here today. All right, don't forget, like and subscribe. Don't forget, smash that notification button.